And I'm Zach Armstrong with Coats. And in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to build a half bridge solid state Tesla coil that can produce over 250,000 volts. So before we build this solid state Tesla coil, we gotta know what a solid state Tesla coil actually is. So here's the traditional schematic for a Tesla coil. We've got a high voltage transformer here that generates high voltage electricity, which charges up this capacitor. Once that capacitor has reached full charge, it discharges across this spark gap and forms a spark, which dumps all that energy into the primary coil, which induces electricity in the secondary coil and generates these massive lightning bolts. But that is sort circuit is called a spark gap Tesla coil. And I've actually built a spark gap Tesla coil on my channel a few months ago. I, I call it El Zappo and it, I'm kind of sick of it. It's super inefficient and constantly pops the circuit breaker. That's because it requires 4,000 volts to run properly. This new solid state Tesla coil circuit is a much more efficient way of generating big lightning bolts out of a Tesla coil. Basically, you keep that same primary and secondary coil, but you use a different way of powering them or driving that primary coil to make it more efficient. The solid state Tesla coil circuit is really, really complex, and this is what it looks like. Basically, these two IGBTs, or insulated gate bipolar transistors, which are like really overpowered transistors, basically switch on and off extremely fast, generating a pulsating alternating current to drive the primary coil and generate massive voltages on the secondary coil. But how? But one thing with the Tesla coil is you got to time the pulses of electricity in the primary coil exactly right to get them to match the natural resonant frequency of the secondary coil. That's done manually by changing the number of turns on the primary coil in a spark gap Tesla coil like El Zappo. But with a solid state Tesla coil, you don't need to do that. You can actually get it to automatically tune to the right resonant frequency. Basically, this antenna picks up the electromagnetic pulses created by the secondary coil and sends those into the Schmidt trigger, which takes that, uh, which parses out the frequency of those pulses and creates a, si a square wave of that exact same frequency. That square wave gets is am amplified by this gate driver I see. Then uh, that goes into the bridge. To explain what the bridge is, here's Zach Armstrong from Lab Coats. Our circuit was derived from the Low Motions SSTC2, which was in turn derived from Steve Ward's Mini SSTC. A number of other YouTubers also helped contribute to our circuit's design. For instance, PowerMax helped with the overall layout, and Brian from Sci2HD brought the need for an inrush current limiter. Anyway, the main difference between our circuit and the Low Motion circuit is the absence of a few annoying extra components. We also swapped out the at tiny interrupter with the 555 timer based one, since nobody wants to program the microcontroller. Now, the resulting interrupted signal from our gate driver circuit is finally sent to a small device known as a gate drive transformer, or GDT. The GDT can easily be made by wrapping two 12 turn coils and one 8 turn coil onto a suitable ferrite core. If properly assembled, the GDT converts the 12 volt signal from our driver circuit into two 18 volt signals, which are optimal for switching our transistors. If we phase the GDT correctly, it will cause the transistors to switch the 340 volts DC from our power supply across the primary coil at the resonant frequency. And since the resonant frequency is detected by the drive circuit, we can basically stick any secondary coil we want in the primary coil's field and it will resonate almost perfectly, producing an incredibly powerful electrical discharge. Since I obviously don't have time to solder together the over 30 different components in this Tesla coil, that's why I got these PCBs. PCBs are printed circuit boards, basically like the circuit boards you find in electronics. And, actually, and these ones were actually designed by Zach, so thanks so much to uh, Zach for that. And they've got holes to put in all the different components, they've got all the wires basically printed onto the board, and wait, is that me? <laughs> so thanks so much to Zach Armstrong for, uh, from Lab Coats for designing these printed circuit boards. So now we've got to solder all the components to them. All 
All right, so now we've built the driver to power the secondary coil. But where is the secondary coil? I guess we gotta wind that. So I guess I gotta pull out my old Tesla coil secondary coil winding jig made out of an electric drill and a bunch of random parts. And because just winding it by hand, of course, isn't fast enough. And get winding the secondary coil. <laughs> Since IGBTs can't switch at frequencies over 400 kilohertz, and this secondary coil will automatically resonate at a frequency higher than 400 kilohertz, we need to add a metallic top load to create capacitance that lowers the resonant frequency. Cardboard Pac-Mans. Yum, 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 All right, all right. Now that I'm finished torturing the cameraman, now I can get to gluing the cardboard Pac-Mans to this big center disc. I filled all the voids between these discs with this spray foam, and it was a total nightmare to work with. It stuck to every, it stuck to the table, got on everything, and it was just a total nightmare to work with. Great stuff, yeah, right. <laughs> Mr. Optimist, let's plug this peppy in. <laughs> One, two, three. Well, surprise, surprise, it doesn't work. So I guess we gotta troubleshoot. We're getting sparks off of there. Oh my god. Oh my, oh my freaking god, we're getting sparks off of there. <gasps> <laughs> All right, so it works. Now what? Well, obviously, messily sprawling out a bunch of random electronic parts on the kitchen table is not engineering. So we gotta put this thing on some kind of case. You, you've been knocked down and got up again. In a corner, you're surrounded, no defenders. Whoa, you, you've hit your fury and kept it in. need to think of a name for it. How about Le Petit Zapier? Because, you know, this one's pretty small. Now, let's fire up our new Tesla coil.
super satisfied with the output of this Tesla coil, so I think I'm gonna end the video here. But be sure to subscribe, because in the future, I'm gonna be posting a video where I make this Tesla coil play music from the Sparks. It's gonna be really awesome. And also, a huge thanks goes out to Zach Armstrong from Lab Coats, as well as Clayton, the Plasma Prince, Nick from Coil Labs, Brian from SciTube HD, and Max from the YouTube channel PowerMax, who all joined into this collaboration and made their own unique videos about this solid state Tesla coil circuit. So be sure to use my link in the description to check out their channels and uh, give uh, and be sure to subscribe, give them some love. Yeah, they're all, they all have really awesome channels that I'm subscribed to. So definitely go check out those links in the description. And also one last thing, I am getting so close to 100 subscribers. So you should definitely subscribe because when I hit 100 subscribers, I'm giving away four of the print, four printed circuit boards for the for this solid state Tesla coil design to lucky viewers. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.